This huge standard poodle is named Nigel. This two-year-old boy is better to tell me just how much he hates grooming. Listen to his growls as he warns me. Okay. Easy. No. Here I'm holding Nigel's leg and I'm telling him he's not allowed to turn his head to me and that I need to do the job. I'm not pulling on his leg. I'm merely letting him know that I'm the boss, although he's not listening. Nigel has not been trained properly for grooming, as you can tell. Poodles are very high maintenance dogs and should be brought to the groomer as soon as they've had their full round of vaccinations at least every month for their first year of their life to desensitize them and train them. Nigel clearly doesn't have a problem when I work on his chest, but every time I go to do his legs, he lifts them, he growls, he's turning his head. It makes it extremely difficult to get this job done, and quite frankly, it's pretty dangerous. Guess how long it took me to complete this dog's groom? Two full days. Yep, you heard that right. The day before, Nigel came in for a bath, blow dry, and for me to straighten his coat. He was pretty well behaved for the bath, so I didn't think there would be any problem the next day. His coat was very long and very thick. Poodles are extremely high maintenance and require frequent bathing. Nigel's owner, however, had tried to do it himself. The problem with this is that Nigel never learned proper grooming techniques, which your professional groomer is trained to teach. As a result, Nigel has developed some very bad table manners that his dad would put up with, but a professional groomer would be able to train those out of him by taking their time and desensitizing him properly as a puppy. Nigel is also not neutered, which contributes to some of his temperament. At this age, he's got hormones surging through his body. And like most teenagers I know, that can get pretty ugly. In this case, it's actually dangerous. Did you see that? When Niall just turned his head at me, he was trying to bite. The belly band I have on the back of Nigel is to keep him safe and secure on the table because he's moving so frequently. It's very difficult to earn a dog's trust as they have to be their absolute most vulnerable selves to allow themselves to be touched in ways they're not normally touched. I respect this, and it's an honor when a dog allows me to groom them. No. I filmed this for Nigel's dad so he could see his behaviors. Now watch this. Hey. Nigel's turn right there was a very close bite. He didn't get me, but I'm lucky. You can see me moving around Nigel and never really getting much done. I keep having to move around and switch legs and get done what I can while he lets me. Nigel's safety is my very first priority, as is my own. I make sure to keep one eye on Nigel's head and one eye on what I'm doing while I'm grooming. I give him lots of praise when he does what I need him to do, but then I also correct him verbally when he misbehaves or growls or starts to pull away. You let me go all the way down. Ah, that was good. Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry good. to have Nigel's no, testicles in no. your face. The most you important thing I want you to remember is you don't need to turn your puppy into a baby shark like this. If you take them for regular grooming, no matter what breed, after they've had their first round of vaccinations no. as a puppy, take them once a month for a year at no, least. Get the That will help them learn to really enjoy the process. I have dogs that'll fall asleep on the table while I'm grooming them. Definitely not Nigel. Unfortunately, Nigel's dad didn't schedule another appointment with me. I feel sorry for the groomer who gets him next. Thanks for watching. Good luck, Nigel. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe for more content.